Hi, I'm Lisa Curcio, and I would love to welcome you here to Lisa's Stamp Studio. Today is Monday. It is November 6th. The year is 2023. Let's DIY some easy Christmas cards you can craft in five minutes. Welcome to this YouTube premiere. This is a special viewing, and I am here right now with you in the live chat. So to interact with us, I'd love for you to log into your YouTube account so that you can chat here live with us, as well as leave a comment if you're watching the replay. You are going to love all five cards I'm going to demonstrate for you tonight, but you're not going to want to miss that free project sheet. That's linked for you down in the video description below. It's going to include multiple pictures of all five cards, cutting dimensions, and all the supplies so that you can duplicate these at home. Now, although these are five minute cards, I promise, I'm gonna take a little bit more time going through them with you so they can teach you the components of the card. Keep in mind that color and layout are always a great thing to learn here at Lisa Stamp Studio, and I'm looking forward to sharing those with you. Now, if you're here for the live chat, I wanna make sure you know all about that name in blue off to the side with me. That is Gina Curcio Holly. You might recognize that surname. Gina is my daughter. She's also an avid stamper and the sales and marketing director here at Lisa's Stamp Studio. We are both here to answer your questions live and interact with you. So we hope that you'll chat with us. All right, we're ready. Let's get started. I'm going to begin by using my small grid papers, and this is going to help to protect my work surface because I'm going to do some stamping on some little squares. Now I've got them here off to the side and I've got four of them. So I'm just going to line them up on here so that you can see them. We are going to create a collage, but it's not probably like you think. And I wanted to create some Christmas cards that were not your typical color palette. So I'm using Fresh Freesia. I don't know about you, but I do love this for my wintry cards as well. So let's go ahead and let's open that up. And I've got my pieces here. Now let me show you the stamp set we're gonna be using for this card. It's called Sparkling Snowflakes. It's in the mini catalog. And you'll notice that there are both solid and detailed images. Now you can use these detailed images independently or you can what we call two-step them over the solids. And that's what I'm gonna teach you tonight. I have the detailed snowflake mounted here. And because the ink is kind of a light color, I decided to work backwards. Normally I do the lightest color first and then the dark, but tonight I'm gonna to do it this way because there's a lot of details in here and you'll see why in just a minute. So I'm gonna ink this up and I'm gonna decide where on that little square I want my placement. So let's go ahead and let's put the first one here. And then I'm gonna ink that up again. And this time I'm gonna go up here. And then this one, I think I'm gonna go a little bit more off to the side. And then let's move this one now all the way down into the corner. So you can see that I've put them in different places on purpose. I'm moving now to the coordinating solid image. Now I'm gonna show you on camera very quickly how this is going to line up. Do you see how those little tips are gonna fit inside of here? Normally I would do the lightest first, but you can see that this is gonna be a lot easier because I've stamped the darker shade. It's gonna be easier to see. I'm using the same ink. And this is a great tip for you at home. There's no reason to buy ink pads that are super closely related in color because look, one ink pad can produce typically at least two or three shades of color. So I'm gonna lighten this up to go over that darker snowflake. So I'm gonna stamp off and then I'm gonna navigate this over the top. Now I'm trying not to get my head in your camera view. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press that there and I'm going to lift. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing now for these other images. Just doing my best to line it up and then stamp, ink it up, and then we're gonna stamp. Stamping off is gonna provide that light layer of ink underneath that snowflake, which is really gonna allow this to be a bit more pronounced. And then here is our last one. With these finished, I'm gonna go ahead and put these off to the side because we're gonna come back to those in just a minute. And I'm gonna work now on the card base. This is just basic white, I scored it in half, and I'm gonna go ahead and fold this. Again, as a reminder, all the pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies are gonna be inside that free project sheet. This is a bone folder. I'm gonna go over those nice edges to make them crisp. And I'm gonna stamp my greeting next. So I'm gonna come back to the Fresh Freesia ink and I've pulled out the words from that stamp set. And this says, make the season sparkle. So I'm gonna ink that up. Do you see how I'm traveling? I wanna make sure that I've got good coverage. We all have a tendency to use the center of the pad, don't we? But there's ink everywhere. So I'm gonna encourage you to use the entire ink pad. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp this now right here near the bottom. We're done with this. The one reason I love this card is because it doesn't matter if you've never stamped before, this is easy. 
I'm going to slide that over and bring in my silicone craft sheet. I'm going to be using my stamp and seal plus. So do you remember these four images that we created? Well, I actually cut four of these to be mounted on top of here. I'm going to flip that over on top of that silicone craft sheet. We're going to add our adhesive and we're going to provide a little bit of a border to this white. We'll do the same thing now with this one. The silicone craft sheet is going to protect that work surface because adhesive, liquid glue, and hot glue will not stick to it, which means it's going to be fantastic for crafting. If this is your first time here at my YouTube channel, I'm so glad you've stopped by. Hit that subscribe button. And if you're returning and you are enjoying what you see tonight, do me a favor and hit that like button, which is the thumbs up button. That helps me tons here on YouTube. All right, this is our last one. And now we're going to work on a really interesting formation for these. And I have an easy way for you to put this together. Now, keep in mind when you've got squares, you can work with any type of grid pattern that you like. It's completely up to you. You can even turn them on the diamond. But I want to teach you something different tonight. And for this, I'm going to bring out my glue dots. You'll see that the dots of glue are here between the layers of the paper. Determine which one you want to start with. And I'm going to just place it on my base here of cardstock just to get an idea of where it's going to go. Then I'm going to take a look and decide, oh, I think I'll take this one next. And I want this one here. So I want to stagger them, but I want them to stay together. So this is where the glue dot comes in. So I'm going to pick this up and in this upper top left corner, I'm going to press that on my glue dot and I'm going to lift. And then all I'm going to do is position this where I want it to tack it in place. Now it's not a permanent hold because it's going to shimmy just a little bit, but that'll make more sense in a second. Then I have my next one here and you can see I'm going to have to rotate this to actually make this work, but that's okay because I've got area to connect it. So let's go over here and let's take another glue dot. And this time I'm going to put it down in the lower left corner so that these two are going to be connecting. Now the thing here you need to know is that you want the top ledge of this to be about as straight as possible. So I'm looking here and I am going to just look across. And then once I'm happy with that, we'll tack that in place. Remember, there's a little bit of wiggle room here. Now this next one is going to go down in the lower right corner. So again, I'm going to take myself a glue dot. And I'm going to put that up here in the top left to connect them. This time we want this second row to be as even as possible. And then we'll tack those together. And like I said, they're going to shimmy a little bit. So let's move that and let's bring back in the silicone craft sheet. I'm going to flip this upside down. Now, even though it's upside down here, I can see whether or not these are relatively even. And this is where you're going to place your dimensionals. So I have my pre-cut dimensional pieces here and I'm going to secure these together with the dimensional. That's going to provide double duty. It's going to secure those obviously, but it's also going to provide me some elevation, which is what I'm looking for. So once I'm happy with it, and I think that they're all nice and even, we're going to go ahead and we are going to significantly cover this because I don't want any shifting during mailing. That's something you have to be careful of when you send your cards because there are rollers in the mail meter at the post office. So while I know this looks abundant, I want to make sure that this doesn't come out all wonky on the other end. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to give it one last look. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to remove those backings. Now, my favorite way to do that is with the take your pick tool. There's a putty tip here, which I absolutely love to pick up small pieces of paper, sequins, you name it. And then I have interchangeable tips. This has the paper piercing tool attachment. So I'm going to pierce and I am going to pull off those paper backings. I have osteoarthritis here in my basal joint. So anything that requires small pinching motions or grabbing between my thumb and index finger is very painful for me. So this has been a game changer for me. You can see I'm bracing the paper as I pull that backing off. I'm going to go ahead and lift that, move that out of the way. And here we come here to the card base. This is your chance one more time just to make sure everything is where you want it. I'm looking at the top row to do the best that I can, and I'm just going to shimmy these in place. Now we're going to add some bling because the sparkle, as far as I'm concerned, is the best part. These are the tinsel gems, and this is the three pack. And you can see I wrote the colors here at the top. That just helps me when I'm crafting. Now these already have glue dots on the back, so you can pick them up with your putty tip. I'm going to place one down here. I'm going to use a bigger one this time. And this one, I think I'm going to place, well, of course, this one wants to be persnickety, doesn't it? <laughs> this one I'm going to place over here. 
And then let's go with, well, I think maybe another medium one. What do you think? So we'll go with that one here. And I'm going to work up here near the top. I like to create that trio, which is really appealing to the eye. Give those a good push. And there you go. Nice and simple for our first card. All right, let's move on to the next one. This one is going to use a slightly smaller card base. It's still going to fit an A2 envelope. You'll have a little bit extra room. It's going to mail just fine. Again, all the cutting dimensions are inside that project sheet. So it's going to make a perfect square bone folder again to create that nice crisp crease. You can put the crease at the top or at the side. That's entirely up to you. But I want to layer for this card. And for this one, while it's still easy, I'm going to teach you something really fun. I wanted an angle on this, but I knew I wanted an embossed background. So I pulled out the Cheery Patterns Embossing Folders. Now these come in a duo, and this happens to be the one with the polka dots. Now you might be thinking, how's that going to work? Because that embossing folder is smaller than the paper. I got you. So let's go ahead and let's open this up. And we're going to put the paper in on an angle. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it to make sure that the top right tip stays within the embossing folder. So I'm going to get some pattern on here. I'm going to move it all the way up to the top. And now I'm going to pass it through my embossing machine. Now I've just done that off camera. And here you can see that we have our partially embossed image. What we're going to do now is we are going to cut this on an angle. And I'm just giggling at myself because I realize this is going to have a slightly different angle than the one inside your project sheet. But you know what? It's always good to teach you two different ways. Let me bring in my paper trimmer. Now there's no rocket science to this. You're just going to use that negative area here where there's no embossing as your guide. So I'm going to turn this inside my trimmer. And I love this paper trimmer with Stampin' Up because it has a clear cutting guide. It also includes both the scoring and the cutting blades that stay right here on that guide. You don't ever have to remove them. So I'm just going to navigate this. So I can see it kind of stops here and kind of stops here. And I'm just going to look and move this through the clear guide to make sure that I don't have any embossing. Now, when I'm happy with it, all I have to do is take my cutting blade and just slice. And that's going to give this this little small portion at the bottom. Now, save this because I've got a tip for you. I'm going to put the small piece and that trimmer off to the side for just a minute. But let's talk about this. As cool as this was, I wanted to give it that holiday feel. So I'm going to come back to that scrap grid paper that we just used previously. And I'm going to bring in my Wink of Stella. Now I have my Wink of Stella pen here. I always recommend that you store it straight up and down. So this is the top and I'm giving it a good shake before I'm using it. You're going to pull off the cap. There are the words push on two sides. So the first time you use this, you're going to have to gently squeeze it. I like to do it over a clear block to prime the pen. That's going to bring the shimmer down to the tip. And all you're going to do is one of two things either paint the inside or paint the rim. And I did the rim. So I'm going to come right around here and I'm just going to use that brush. You can use tiny dot motions. You can just stroke with it. And guess what? It doesn't have to be perfect. This is a great craft for the kids as well. Now, if you're finding you don't have enough shimmer, come back to that block and you're going to give that a squeeze. But I'm going to caution you when it first becomes primed, it comes out heavy. So you're going to want to make sure that you dab a little bit off. Now, when I put it on my clear block, the great news is I can come back and use it as a paint palette, right? So nothing is getting wasted. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cover all of these little outlines to these circles now. All right, I've got all of my little outlines covered. I'm going to move that out of the way. I don't really think you're going to be able to appreciate this on camera, but I'm going to try. The shimmer on the outline, the raised areas, is beautiful. What we're going to do now is let that dry. It's got an alcohol base, so it's going to take just a few minutes. But let's work on our stamping next. I have a scrap piece of basic white cardstock here, and I'm going to be using a stamp set that I have had so much fun with. It's called Sending Cheer. It will make tags. It will also make some really fantastic cute greetings for your card. Bold and simple. It does have coordinating dies, which I did use. I do love the bundle of buying them together because if I'm like you, it's a busy time of year and we want to be able to do quick and easy. And that's why we're here tonight. But for this one, I'm going to be honest with you. I have had some difficulty getting a good solid image with this because my hands lately have been really, really sore. You can see how swollen they are. So let me introduce you to this. This is the Misty Mini Stamp Positioning Tool. Now I'm going to apologize up front that you've got a glare from the studio lights. There's not much I can do about that. That'll help when I get cardstock in here. But I love this product. It has been a game changer. I have both the mini and the full size. Now the mini is great if you're doing small images like I'm doing tonight. 
It comes with a little tiny pad of scratch paper to protect the foam mat. The foam mat would come out if you're using red rubber cling stamps, but I'm using photopolymer tonight. So I've got my grid paper there just in case I stamp over and it has one strong magnet. And I added washi tape to the center because it just helps me lift it because it is very, very strong. But let me show you how awesome this is. The first tip I'm going to tell you is if you don't do anything straight and you want it straight, work inside the lower corner and then push your magnet. The great thing about this platform is that this is very shallow. So you don't have to worry about the magnet impeding here on the hinges or on the stamp itself. Once you have your cardstock in place, then you can get your stamps ready. So I have my first image here, which is the bow, and I have a feeling this is not gonna be tall enough. So let's go ahead and let's turn it this way. Now, since there's dies for this, I'm not worried about it being positioned anywhere in particular. I'm using this to help me get the nice even coat of ink. So I'm gonna place this here where I know it's going to fit. And then all you're going to do is you're gonna press on the misty. And what's going to happen is it's going to lift the image here onto the plate. Now, since that was a brand new stamp that I've only used a full time, it may lift the cardstock just a tad. So I'm gonna move that magnet down a little bit more. Here on this side is where I'm actually gonna ink it. Now, the one reason I love this is it almost folds completely flat. So you don't have to worry about any bowing. Now I'm gonna bring in the shaded spruce ink pad. I'm gonna open that up and I am going to tap and I'm gonna ink straight up and down. Now you can see you can use smaller ink pads, larger ink pads, anything is going to work. But here is the beauty all the way in the corner so we've got exact positioning and then we are going to press. Now this came out pretty good. If you were here and looking at it, you'd be seeing that there's areas here that are not as solid as the rest. So I'm gonna make sure this is back down in my corner and there's two things you can do. You can either re-ink this or you can come back in because it's perfectly aligned and press again to get out that residual ink and that's what I'm going to do and then I'm going to lift and that is much, much better but here comes the best part. I'm just gonna pull this off right now because I'll clean it later, but I'm gonna clean it on the next one so you can see how that's done. Let's close this. Do you see that little area down the center? That's meant for the bow. So let's go ahead and let's use some cherry cobbler ink. And this time we're gonna use the component that goes with this. I'm gonna turn it face down. So this is the flat back side, and I'm gonna once again, just make sure my cardstock is aligned inside that corner. I am going to put this exactly where I think it needs to be. Now, photopolymer is sticky. So if yours is brand new, just be patient with yourself. Once it looks visually good, then all you have to do is close the hinge. I'm gonna go ahead and press, and I'm gonna lift. Now again, a new photopolymer stamp is sticky, so I'm just gonna make sure that's back in my corner. Here we go, cherry cobbler. We are gonna ink that face up. Now, if you're wondering where you're gonna be able to get this fantastic tool, I'm gonna tell you right now, I've got it linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites, and we're gonna push. Again, I have had so much trouble with my hands lately, but this has been a saving grace. A little bit light here. So again, I'm just making sure it's down in my corner because then it's perfectly aligned, and I'm gonna push off that red residual ink. Perfect every single time. I'm gonna remove my paper, and if you're wondering how to clean this, let me show you. So I took one of the Stampin' Chamois from Stampin' Up and I cut it up. So I have one in half and I have a couple smaller pieces. When they're new, they're really pretty. But this is the sign of a loved chamois and it's gonna look like this and it's gonna stay stained and it should, so don't worry. You're gonna make it damp with water, not soaking wet. And all you're gonna do is you're just gonna blot off the ink. Now in my case, I'm gonna go on and move on to die cutting. But if you're worried about the water on here, you can use just a microfiber cloth or a rag that has no lint and you can just dab it if you want. And then it just gets peeled right off and you can put that right back in the stamp case. Now I did die cut that ahead of time. And I also took the liberty of die cutting the greeting for you. But I wanna show you something else about this bundle that I really love. Do you see this? There are some tags in here as well as this one. So you can make small individual tags using the dies and the greetings. So I did that as well, and those are here. So let's come back here to the base of the card. Do you remember this? Let's flip this upside down and let's add our adhesive around the outside. Now Stamp and Seal Plus is very strong. So let me give you a couple tips about it. You do not need to press hard on the paper when you're putting the adhesive on it. If you do, it's strong enough to rip the paper. So take your time. I'm gonna come back here to the card base and I am looking to create a nice little border around that white piece and then we'll tack that in place. Now here comes the image. I'm gonna flip this upside down because I want some elevation to this 
And you'll recall we did this just a few minutes ago with the other one. Look at that. I'm out of dimensionals, but I have more. But I want to give you another cost-saving tip. I'm reaching now for my scissors. And these with the little red ribbon here on the handle are meant for sticky projects because I don't like to gunk up the good ones. So I'm cutting these into small pieces. And if you're like me when you're crafting, you hate to have to stop to do like a maintenance thing, right? And that's what I call this. So I'm just going to cut them all up. And then I'm going to have them all ready to go when I need them. So let's go ahead and place one here. And again, because my hands are super sore, I'm going to use that take your pick tool to my advantage. And then I'm going to take another one and I am going to place it here. And then we're going to remove those paper backings just like we have in the past. Here's that putty tip in action. You're going to love that. Let's take this now and I'm going to put this now on the left hand side versus the one that's in your project sheet, which is on the right. And I'm going to attach that here. Now for my greeting, I'm going to flip that upside down. And because I know my seal plus is very, very strong, I'm going to put it here on that little back. I love that adhesive because of the strength and simply because it comes out in small tabs. I'm going to go ahead and press that in place and I'm going to add a small gem. Now these are the sparkle gems and you can see they come in silver, black, and like a beautiful copper. So I'll take one of these larger ones and let's put that right over that hole just to add this a little bit of bling and to bring some continuity to the shimmer. Now on this one in particularly, you're going to see that this piece is smaller, but let me show you. This can go on the inside of the card. So I'm going to flip that over. I'm going to add a little, little bit of adhesive. Remember I told you it comes out in tabs. So I'm going to do the two sides. I'm going to flip this so I can pull towards me here at the bottom and just do a small, small area. Another reason I love that adhesive, any excess, I got a little zealous there, can get rolled back on top of itself. This now is going to go here. Remember, there's no adhesive at the top. Take your grip card and it's going to fit right down inside. The card base for this one is four and a quarter by 11. I did score it in half at five and a half inches. Again, just as a reminder, all those cutting dimensions are for you in that project sheet. Bone folder. So now we've got our card base. I am going to work with this one with the crease at the top. Now for this designer series paper, if you don't have designer series paper, make your own by stamping on cardstock and use the same formulation I'm going to give you right now. Designer series paper, absolutely beautiful. This is from the Merry and Bright package. Now Stampin' Up's designer papers are double-sided, which I absolutely love because one side typically has a theme and the other one is generic. I can use this all year round. We're going to cut this in an interesting formation. I'm going to give you some practical tips. Back here to the paper trimmer. We are going to cut on the diagonal from the upper left to the bottom right. And you're going to want to pause before you go too far. So just watch me first. With that clear cutting guide I love, you can see that the tip of the paper here is at the top of that little gray area where the blade travels and also here at the bottom of your screen. I never want to take my blade and start there because it's too shallow. It's going to crunch up the paper. So I'm going to teach you what's called anchoring the blade. So you're going to bring the blade up to the center, drop it, and then slice up and down. Now this is where the pause comes in. You're going to need something to hold these together before we move on. And I love the post-it labeling and cover-up tape. Now this is linked for you on my website under Shop Craft Room Favorites, the same place as the Misty. And the reason I love this is this is the same roll I bought more than two years ago. You only need small pieces. You can rip it, make it even smaller yet. I love it's nice and tacky. And I get up to about six uses of this, especially to hold my dies in place. But here's another reason I love it. I'm going to open this. Well, I can see that it's sliced. I'm just going to pinch these together and make sure that they're aligned. And my tape is going to go right there because we are now going to turn this and cut on the diagonal in the opposite direction. I'm moving my blade down and I'm looking through that clear cutting guide once again. So I'm looking here and I'm looking here. And once I'm happy with them, we're going to open this up. My finger's here to hold it and we are going to anchor the blade once again. So I am going to drop that blade and I'm going to slice up and slice down. Because the paper on the post-it labeling and cover-up tape is so thin, you don't have to worry about your blade traveling through it. Now here's the fun part. You're going to lift and remove the tape. Now obviously this piece is kind of small. I won't be saving that. But this one I will because I can use this to anchor down my dies and my die cutting machine. Now you're going to see here that we've got four pieces. But even more fun if you mix 
and match them. So I'm going to turn these over. So keep in mind, if you're going to use this, you're going to need to interchange your designer series paper. So keep in mind direction. That's going to be important. Or cut two and shuffle them. Take some from the other package and then mix them with these. And then you'll have a total of two cards versus this one. Now let's talk about adhering them. I'm back here to the card base with the crease at the top. We are going to put the quadrants together. I prefer to start with the one that's going to be at the top center. Now we are going to look to leave a small margin here at the top because we want that border. Now while that might look like it's going to be challenging, I've got some fantastic tips for you. Back to the silicone craft sheet. This time I'm going to be using some liquid glue. Now the multi-purpose liquid glue is sold in my online store and I love it because it's strong and it dries quickly. But this tip is way too big. So I put that glue in this precision glue applicator. Now the tip on this has a needle tip, which makes it super easy to use. It comes with the silicone lid. It does not dry out. I'm going to remove that cap. I'm going to place it underneath the rubber band here. That was a tip from one of my YouTube viewers. Thank you. I'm going to shake that glue down to make sure it's at the top and I hate surprises. So here in the corner of my silicone craft sheet, I'm going to make sure that it's flowing. And I'm going to show you how tiny these can be. Isn't that amazing? So what I'm going to do now is take this and I'm going to flip it upside down and I'm going to hold it because that works better for me. I'm very lightly squeezing. And again, as we've talked about my arthritic hands, you know I can't squeeze hard. So this works fantastic. I'm making the glue thin because how many times have you used liquid glue and you put too much and then it oozes all over the place? I'm going to turn this slightly to make it easier for me visually. And you're going to see I'm not going to let go of it until I am certain that I have the placement where I want. Because like I told you, it dries quickly and it is very, very strong. And then I'm going to attach that in place. Now we're going to come over to this piece. Now you can see where this one is going to fit. And I'm going to place this one here so you can see where that's going to fit. And then this one. You want to keep a little bit of white cardstock around the center margin of the card. So let's go ahead and lift this one up and we are going to do the exact same thing. Listen, none of us is perfect. So if you need to shimmy a little right and a little left, don't worry about it because when we go to finish this card, all of that is going to be an illusion if you're a little bit off. So don't be too worried about that. I'm looking here at the edge. I'm looking for about the same amount of margin that I have at the top here. Once I'm happy with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to attach that in place. Now we're going to work on the right hand side and we're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to shake that glue down and I'm going to make sure that it's nice and thin because I want to work near the edges, but I don't want it to ooze all over my cardstock. If you go over to lisastampstudio.com and you scroll to the bottom, you'll see the word subscribe. I would love to include you on my free weekly e-newsletter. I include a free project there for you every week and you'll always be in the know about the specials and all the fun things coming up. And then we'll tack that one here. And now we have just one more. While you're over on my website, click on shop and PDF tutorials. And you'll see I have a huge library there of lots of ideas for you. And then again, here we go with the last one. And you can see mine isn't perfect either. And it's okay because it's going to look fantastic when we're done. Now let's talk about this bottle. Squeeze it through your silicone craft sheet and then put the lid on. You want to make sure that you are storing this vertically. That's going to be really, really important because you don't want the tip to become clogged. Now we need to add a greeting because I don't think it needs a whole lot more, does it? So let's talk about that. The greeting that I'm using is coming from Joy to You. And I love them because they're big and bold and they're going to look fantastic when all you have is designer series paper and you're trying to whip out cute, clever cards. But because we've just talked about this, I'm having a hard time getting a nice solid compression here because of my hands and alignment. So back to my Misty and we're going to open that up and we are going to pull out the greeting. I have a scrap piece of basic white cardstock here. I am going to anchor this down with the magnet once again. I know that I'm going to die cut this. If you're not, you can make this piece of paper the size you need and anchor it inside the Misty and you're going to be good to go with the stamp positioner. Again, I'm looking to just make sure that it's on there. And if you're worried about it being straight, there are grid lines here that I love. So you can always go this way and align it. Now, if you are worried that the sticker has not been placed on here correctly, you can actually stamp it here on the background paper they give you and then readjust this as needed. I'm just going to place this here because I know I'm die cutting it. 
I'm going to close that lid and that's going to lift up the stamp. But we need to make one change, don't we? This is red rubber and a cling stamp. So we do not need this foam. If I didn't remove this, this would not be able to get to the paper well enough. So I'm going to move this down to here, everything back in the corner, and now we're going to use our ink. For this, I've got Granny Apple Green Ink Pad. Let's open that up and then we are going to tap to ink up. Again, that platform lid here on the right is nice and flat, so you're going to be able to get that inked well. Now, can you see my magnet is in the way? So let's go ahead and let's move this a little bit up to the top and then we are going to press. If there's no room for the magnet, guess what? As long as your cardstock is in the corner, you're good to go. My letters are not nice and bold, so I need to do this again. So I'm gonna ink this up, and this was the problem I was having when I was using a regular clear block. And I am going to make sure my cardstock's in the corner, it is, and then we are going to press. So I'm using my fingertips. You can use the heel of your hand, and then I'm gonna lift. Now that looks so much better. Just like we've done before, I take a little piece of chamois and just give that a little bit of a dab and then I can go ahead and just pull that off. I wanted to die cut those so they would look a little fancier, so I used the Nested Essentials die, and I used this large label here with the rounded corners. I did do that ahead of time just to save a little bit of time on the video with you tonight, and that is here. So let's flip this upside down. Let's go back to those dimensionals that we cut up. I'm gonna use my Take Your Pick tool once again, and I'm gonna place those here now in the four corners. Make sure that you head over to my website and you download that project sheet. The link for you is in the video description below because you're gonna want that tonight for all these cards. And I'm gonna remove those paper backings now. This now is gonna go right here in the center. Keep in mind, vertical or horizontal greetings are gonna look great, but we need some holiday bling. So here are the rhinestones. So I'm gonna pick up one of the larger ones here at the bottom and I'm gonna place that here, and I'll work with a slightly smaller one on an angle here to draw your eye. And then we gotta draw that eye up a little bit. So let's put another one up here. Go ahead and give those a really good push so that they're secure, and your third card is all done. All right, let's move on to the next one. Our next card uses a very similar card base, but we're gonna do this one a little bit differently. And if you're thinking, Oh, the power of a great die, you are thinking right, because this doesn't use any stamps. I wanna create a nice, soft, muted background for this card. So I'm gonna come back here to my grid paper. Now, an important tip for you is if any of this ink is wet, it can pick up onto your next project. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel that off and turn it upside down. Love it's double-sided. I'm gonna place my card stock here. I'm using Pool Party Ink, and I'm gonna bring in a blending brush. This is gonna provide a nice light coat of ink to my cardstock. You're gonna see how fine and close the bristles are together, and that's what really does all the work for you. Now, a lot of people like to put their blending brush right in the ink pad. That's not something I enjoy doing because I found it sucked up more ink than I needed. So instead, I'm gonna tap my block inside of there, which is gonna give me a palette. I'm gonna load my brush here off of the block. Now you're gonna see I'm holding it this way because of those hands. But I often know that the ink is very intense off of there. So I'd like to give it just a little bit of a rub to make sure I can see what the consistency is. And then I am going to work here on the cardstock. So I'm just working in circular motions and because I'm gonna cover a broad area, I'm moving from the upper right to the lower left. You can do this as many times as you want based on the consistency of the color that you need. So if you want it darker, we're gonna add a little bit more. So load up the brush off the block. I like to check it. And then I'm gonna start off the cardstock and then work my way across. You're gonna repeat this until you get the desired coverage of your choice. You're gonna clean this just like you would a stamp just off on your chamois. Next, I thought it needed even more texture. So this is where I'm gonna do some splattering, but I'm gonna use the alcohol based Stampin' Blends markers. This is the same color as the ink, Pool Party, and I love Stampin' Up's color coordination. It's second to none. I'm gonna use the brush tip for this. I want you to listen very carefully to some of the tips I'm going to give you. We are actually going to use the lid of this to help splatter the marker. Because the alcohol ink is saturated near the tips, I can flick through here to splatter the ink. You can't always guess on where it's gonna go, so make sure your work surface is protected. And you don't wanna bend the marker, you wanna just give it a flick. So you can see here, as I'm doing so, it's going on the paper. Now I am moving my hand to try to get some variation on it, and you can add as much or as little as you'd like. 
Because it's alcohol ink, it's gonna dry very, very quickly. Let's go ahead and set this aside and let's work on our other pieces. I have two pieces here. This is the pool party cardstock, again, that color coordination, and this is a piece of vellum. And you're gonna see how well these work together. I am actually going to put these together, so I'll come back here to the silicone craft sheet. We're gonna add some adhesive here to the back side. I am going to take the vellum and I'm gonna turn it horizontally. I find I have better luck getting things straight if I go this way versus vertically. And then we're just gonna create that margin all the way around. This is where we're going to build a greeting, but we're not gonna stamp it. So I use these beautiful dies called the Joy of Noel. And there is a die here that die cuts the word Noel. Now, while it looks like it's in a square, it die cuts each letter individually, allowing you to determine the formation of the letters. Love that. And I also use this one with the pine needles. There is a coordinating stamp set to this, also called Joy of Noel, one of my favorites. And just to up our game a little bit for this card, I die cut those letters from silver foil. Isn't this striking? And that's gonna give this a beautiful wintry feel. So I'm gonna bring back this piece here and we are going to lay out the letters first. Now I don't know about you, but I get really excited when I'm nearing the finish line with my cards and I have a tendency to start sticking things down and then this happens, they don't fit. So I, what I want you to do is to lay them out first. Now, if you're really unsure of yourself, I wanna make sure you know that there's a couple things that you can do. You can use glue dots if you'd rather not use liquid glue. And one of the reasons you might wanna do that is if you're new to crafting, is that liquid glue on foil can kind of mar it, kind of leaves a little cloudy finish. Now I have been told, and I've even tried it, a little Q-tip with rubbing alcohol, but of course you would not wanna get that on the paper. And of course that wouldn't be noticeable until it's down. So you have to be very, very careful. And that's one of the reasons why I love this precision tip glue applicator. The other thing is you can use a pencil. Now this is my favorite craft pencil. You'll find it linked for you on my website under shop craft room favorites. Of course, these things that are linked there are not Stampin' Up! products, but I love them so much that I thought you would too. So they're there for you. You can trace just parts of the letter. So let me give you an idea here. Now you can see this is gonna fit pretty good. So once I have this where I want it, let's just assume here, we're gonna trace here and we're gonna trace here. So now we know where the top of the N is gonna be. Then we can do the same thing with the letter O. Once you've got this aligned where you want it, come in here and use the pencil to trace the inside of the circle. Same thing with the E and with the L. Then you can literally pick them up, add your adhesive and place them back down. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to work on just making sure these are where I want them. And I'm gonna trace them and then I'm going to glue them down. And just for the sake of the video for tonight, well, I'm just gonna speed that up for you. Now the great thing about this pencil is the eraser. So if you have any areas that are showing, you can just go ahead and use it. The eraser will not mar the paper because the lead is very, very soft and it doesn't require much effort at all. All right, now we're ready to do a little bit more die cutting, which I did ahead of time. So I die cut two of the pine needles in white, and then I used this punch. This is called the bow punch, and I love this. Now, some of you are gonna say bow, I say ba, tomato, tomato, right? So the bow punch has both the leaf and this little sprig of berries. Now, I did that from the same silver foil, and I did that ahead of time, and those are all here. But let's work on putting these pieces together. Now, the very first thing you're going to want to do is elevate this because we're going to do some tucking behind here. So we're going to flip this upside down. We're going to come back to my scraps of dimensionals that we've used previously. You're going to want to work within the perimeters of the cardstock because you don't want the dimensionals to show through the vellum. So I'm just going to go ahead and piecemeal these little small pieces I have left here. Again, I'm very, very careful to make sure that this is well balanced for mailing. We'll remove those paper backings. This now is going to go here near the left side. Keep in mind, if you don't want a vertical card, change the orientation and make the letters go horizontally. Once I'm happy with that, we're gonna go ahead and tack that in place. We've got these pieces here. Now, because my Stampin' Seal Plus, if you've already seen, is very, very strong, I can kind of cheat a little bit. But I wanna give you a tip. I found that these were difficult for me to kind of put inside. So look at, see those little holes right there? Let's use those to our advantage. 
tuck that down inside there so now you have one piece to work with. Now you can turn this over, you can add a glue dot. I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive because my Stampin' Seal Plus is very strong. This area is going to be hidden behind here. So I'm just gonna put those little tabs to the back and this one is gonna come up. So I'm careful to make sure my adhesive is not going to show and we're gonna press that in place. Now on this one, you can move it to one of the other holes so that the dimension of the depth of this is slightly different. Now for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and put my adhesive near the bottom and I'm gonna put a tiny bit over the base of that little sprig there to make sure that it's not going to move. But again, you wanna make sure that your adhesive is not going to show. So I'm gonna push this one down and give that a good push in place. Look at that. All we need now is the bling, right? So let's come back over to those rhinestones. And for this, I don't wanna take away too much from this. So I'm gonna use smaller ones. So I'm gonna take a small one here and I'm gonna place that one here. And I'm gonna take another small one and we're gonna place this one here. And then finally one more and I'm gonna place that on an angle here. I find that works really well for the eye. Give those a good push in place. Look at that card. Doesn't that just scream winter and Christmas to you? All right, we're ready to move on to our final card for tonight's five minute card crafts. We have a four and a quarter by 11 card base once again, and I did score it in half. Again, using that bone folder for those nice crisp edges. Designer series paper to the rescue. It creates the most stunning cards. This is from the Shining Brightly Specialty Paper, and this is actually going to get adhered with another piece. So let's do that piece first. Same package, don't you love that? So we're gonna bring in that silicone craft sheet once again. Let's add our adhesive down the back side. Now you're gonna to wanna to do this before you put it on the card base because we're gonna add some ribbon. Now I'm looking to align the bottom and the sides the best that I can. And then once you have them secured, you can just go ahead and press those down. This navy glittered ribbon is absolutely stunning. I wish you were here to see it. It does have real glitter in it, so it will have minor flakes of glitter. So please keep that in mind. When doing this, you're gonna to wanna to cut this about an inch wider than the card you're going to adhere it to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna bring in my glue dots. I'm gonna peel back one of the glue dots here and I'm gonna place it on each end. So I've got one there and I've got one there. Because of the glitter, I find that this works way better than adhesive. This is gonna go here where the separation between the designer series paper on the bottom and on the top are going to go. You want this nice and flat, so don't be afraid to pull it tautly, and the raw ends are gonna to go to the back. There is no reason to waste a whole piece of ribbon to go all the way around the card. I found that piecing it together not only saves you money, but saves you time. This now can get adhered to the card base. So we're gonna add some adhesive around the outside perimeters, and this is gonna get attached here. As I told you before, I have difficulty going up and down, so I'm gonna turn this horizontally. I have a better vantage point and then I'm looking for those nice even margins all the way around. This is a piece of very vanilla cardstock that coordinates with that lower piece of designer series paper. And we're gonna do something a little different tonight. Oftentimes we do die cutting like we just did on the previous card, but tonight we're gonna to use the negative. So I'm using the Marius Trees dies. Now this has a coordinating stamp set, which we're gonna use for the greeting that's here. Again, that bundle is gonna save you 10% if you buy both. Love that they include a tag, so you can do Christmas tags with this too. There are different size trees in here. You'll see that there's a small, a medium, even more of a medium, and then of course the large. So you can pick the one that you'd like. I've chosen this size tree, and I want this to go here on the very vanilla cardstock. Now you'll see that I cut this and that those dimensions are in that project sheet purposely so that it fits very, very well. Now obviously if you're gonna go put this in your die cutting machine, this is gonna end up moving all over the place. Do you remember that piece of post-it labeling and cover-up tape? Yeah, we're gonna put that to good use. We're gonna anchor that down and I'm gonna die cut this through my die cutting machine now. Now that I have that die cut, we're gonna go ahead and just carefully remove that tape so that we can use that again another time. This is what we're after. This you can save for another card. Now, obviously something needs to go behind here, so I could not resist some more gold foil. Now, just before you join me, I went ahead and I put that gold foil through the Snowflake Sky 3D embossing folder. See how thick that is? That means you're gonna get a beautiful deep impression. So I did that here, and this is gonna go behind here. Isn't that pretty? Now let's go ahead and put these two pieces together. You can go ahead and use liquid glue if you'd like. Just be careful it doesn't come too close to the inside and mar your foil. Just for tonight, I'm gonna to go ahead and I'm gonna use my adhesive. 
I've got my adhesive around the back, making sure I've got it close to the inside as well so there's no lifting. Here is the foil. Now the foil size inside your project sheet is just slightly smaller than the cardstock. So everything should fit very, very nicely. And then just to bring continuity to the card, we need another layer of cardstock behind here. And this will all make sense in a minute. So let's go ahead and let's add more adhesive. With the adhesive on the back side, let's go ahead and I'm gonna turn it horizontally once again. This has a very small margin on it all the way around. This now is going to go in the center of the card base. So let's flip that upside down. We'll use some of those dimensionals, well balanced again on the back side. Look at those corner leftovers. Don't those work out really well for these types of cards? This now is going to go here. So we're just gonna go ahead and tack that in place. Now I decided it needed a grading. I do have a video already on heat embossing, so this one's already done for you tonight, but I'm gonna talk you through it. You're gonna use Versamark ink. Now Versamark ink is fantastic because it stays sticky a little longer than regular ink. I poured gold embossing powder over the top. I mean, this literally, the entire process took less than a minute. And then I am going to add this with dimensionals. I'm gonna put this in an unusual place. So let's come back to those small pieces again because they're really gonna to work to our advantage. And I'm going to place them here and then one next to it here. And you may think, where are we going to put this? I loved it right here in the center because it breaks up all the gold, but then lends beautiful consistency to the designer series paper and the foil. Absolutely stunning, isn't it? Here are the five cards that we created together tonight. All pretty, all quick and all easy and a great way to use your stamps and your dies. Now, as always, I would love to know your favorite. Do me a favor, pop down right now in the comments and let me know your feedback is always very important to me. Now, before you go, I wanna make sure you know all about this. This is Stamp Studio Memberships. If you sign up level one or level two, every Monday morning at 9 a.m., I'm going to send you an exclusive tutorial right to your inbox. That's gonna include pictures, cutting dimensions, and supplies and step-by-step -step instructions for a brand new project idea. Does not matter what country you live in, we would love to have you join us. Now, if you're marking your calendar, mark it for this. I will be back with you next Monday, which is November 13th already. I look forward to having you here with me. Gina, thanks for helping moderate with me tonight, and I'll see you all then. Bye-bye.